Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today I'm gonna show you a super powerful shortcut in SolidWorks, which allows you to open a part into its own window, create a simple new feature in that part, a mate reference, save that part, close it, and then use the R key to drag and drop that part into an assembly. And as you can see here, when we drag and drop this part into the assembly, it's magically snapping right into place. And the cool thing about this functionality is that it's not only creating one mate, but it's actually creating two mates. So you can see if I click on this part and then go over to the properties of the assembly, there are two mates that have been created, one concentric to the whole and the other coincident to that top face. So today I'm gonna to show you how this is done. Ow! So before we get into today's quick tip, I just wanna remind everyone that we are heading into tournament season. The World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling 2023 will take place in a few months. We're going to get started with the qualifiers taking place in June. Our first matches are going to go down starting in July, and the tournament is going to conclude with the finals taking place on Saturday, November 11th. So if you want to participate in that tournament, or even if you just want to watch and be a spectator, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. I'll be sending out a lot of notifications here on this channel. And you can also head over to TooTallToby.com and sign up for my mailing list. That's another way that you can make sure that you stay in touch with news and information about this tournament. All right, so let's get into today's quick tip. For today's quick tip, we're going to talk about assembly mode, and we're going to kind of springboard off of a tip that we talked about earlier this week, the ability to press the R key to access recently accessed documents and then drag and drop those documents into your assembly. But here today, we're going to take this one step further by kind of pre-cooking those documents with what's known as a mate reference. So let's say I go to a new part here. I'm going to make a new part using my ABS template. So we'll get in here, we'll make a new part using ABS, and we're gonna go to the top plane, begin a sketch, and sketch a circle. I'm gonna give this circle a diameter of 50 millimeters to create a 50 millimeter by 0.5 millimeter sticker, a Too Tall Toby sticker. And so on the face of this sticker, I'm going to add the Too Tall Toby logo. Let's add this logo here. And we're just going to add it to that face. And then let's make a quick adjustment to that logo by going into the properties of that appearance, setting the mapping to, let's say, surface, and choosing to fit width to selection. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just make one final adjustment. I will change the angle of this thing to 180. All right, that's perfect. Perfect for our example today. Let's save that model. So we're going to save that. We'll call that 2020 Too Tall Toby sticker. And let's now pre-cook this to go into our assembly. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the underside, to the planar face of this sticker. Then we're going to press the S key on our keyboard, and we're going to go to the command Reference Geometry Mate Reference. Now, you can also get to this by going into your toolbars here under Feature, Reference Geometry, Mate Reference. Either way, what we're trying to create here is a mate reference on this lower face of the model. And what a mate reference is, is it's a way of pre-cooking a face of a part or a sub-assembly so that when you drag and drop that part into a top-level assembly, the, the face that you selected will be ready to mate to other faces in the assembly. Now, this can get pretty nuanced, and, and what I mean is you can come over here, you can name that mate reference, you can assign a specific type of mate to that mate reference, like tangent, coincident, parallel. You can assign what's called a mate alignment to that mate reference. You can even assign secondary and tertiary mates within that mate reference, and this would be useful if you were trying to uh, create a mate reference with multiple planes that need to snap into multiple other planes or multiple faces that need to snap into multiple other faces. This is a little advanced for today's power move. And so instead, what we're going to focus on is just the very quick default functionality. So I'm going to cancel that mate reference and just kind of start over again. I'm going to pick this lower face S key mate reference default, 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 default green check mark. A new feature has been added to the tree called Mate Reference on the underside planar face of that part file. And now I'm going to save this part file. So Control S for save. And I'm going to close this window. 
Here I am back in the assembly and I'm gonna press the R key for recently accessed document and I'm gonna drag and drop that sticker into my assembly. But instead of just holding my mouse anywhere on the assembly, I'm gonna hold my mouse over a planar face of the assembly, in this case, the top surface of the bass guitar. And now when I let go of my mouse, SolidWorks automatically jumps into mate creation mode. It says, what type of mate do you wanna create? Coincident, parallel, a distance mate. I'm gonna say coincident, hit the green check mark. And now we can see that that sticker has been automatically assigned coincident again if i go over here to the properties we can see there's a coincident meet between the underside of the sticker and the top planar surface of the bass guitar so this means i can right mouse button and drag to rotate left mouse button and drag to move and kind of get that sticker into the perfect place on this bass guitar now we can also do this functionality with a sub assembly so for example the bridge here i could take this bridge i'm going to select the sub assembly and I'm gonna to choose to open that sub assembly into its own window. I'm gonna roll this around, pick the underside face here. I'm gonna go up to my assembly toolbar and go into reference geometry, mate reference. And I'm just gonna use the default here, this underside face of the bridge sub assembly. Then I'm gonna save and close this sub assembly. So control S for save, close the sub assembly. I'm gonna press the R key on my keyboard. And I'm gonna drag and drop that sub assembly here into my higher level assembly. Once again, when I let this go, we can see that a new mate is going to be created. SolidWorks automatically jumps into mate mode. So coincident mate is gonna be created here. I'll hit the green check mark. And now that bridge is snapped right to the top surface, right to the correct planar surface. And this is really powerful. This is a functionality that I use a lot throughout SolidWorks. Anytime I'm creating a part that needs to be snapped onto another part, whoops, what happened to my, uh, what happened to my sticker there? That's kind of weird. That looks good there. I'm just getting bonus a bonus texture there for my sticker. I'm not sure what's going on, but that's not the point of the quick tip. Uh, the, the point of the quick tip here is anytime I am creating geometry that needs to be snapped into place, if I create a planar, if I have planar geometry that needs to be snapped onto other planar geometry, I will often go in and just before I save and close that file, I will S key reference geometry, mate reference, and pick that underside planar face so that when I go to drag and drop that into a higher level assembly, it just kind of snaps right into place. Now, there's a second bit of functionality that I want to show you here, and that's what's known as the peg in hole functionality. And the peg in hole functionality happens when you're working in SolidWorks and you've got an edge which shares a planar and a cylindrical face. So this edge here shares a planar and a cylindrical face. Planar, cylindrical. And this edge here shares a planar and cylindrical face. Well, when you have that scenario in SolidWorks, you can create a different type of mate reference. The default mate reference will become what's known as the peg in hole mate reference. And so what that looks like is this, if I open up this knobby into its own window and I take this edge here, S key, reference geometry, mate reference, default, 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 and hit the green check mark, then I save and I close this document. Well, now when I press the R key to access my recently accessed documents and I drag and drop that knobby, if I drag and drop that onto this edge here, this edge which shares a planar and a cylindrical face, you can see that SolidWorks will automatically snap that component directly into place. And so now I've got two mates on this component. If I click on this component and look up here at properties, I've got a concentric and I've got a coincident. So the edge which lies at the intersection of a cylinder and a plane will define those two mates. The concentric mate will be between the two cylindrical faces and the planar mate will be between the two planar faces. And so if we do that again, if I R key, go here to base knobby, drag, drop, and move that over that edge, which has a cylindrical and a planar face, when I let it go, those two mates will be created and that part will be mated exactly into place. Very useful when you're working with things like hardware, you know, bolts, nuts, screws, where you often have this scenario where you want both a planar and a cylindrical mate in one shot. Or in the case here of these uh, bushings that are going through, what I could do is I could open this part up into its own window I could pick this edge here. This would be kind of like hardware. If you had a bolt, you'd have the underside of the head and you'd have the cylindrical face of the bolt. Well, I can pick this edge here, S key, reference geometry, mate reference, default, 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 hit the green check mark, control S for save, 
close this window now here in the assembly. I really don't need this one anymore. I only have that one there for illustrative purposes. You know, in the real world, I would be making that new part from scratch like I did with the sticker. Then I would hit the R key, drag and drop this bushing. And when I hold my cursor over an edge, which shares a cylindrical and a planar face, I let it go. And that part is just mated right into place. I don't get the mate dialogue because there's really no other solution here. It's not like I can change this to distance or change it to parallel or anything like that. There's really only one possible solution here. Although I certainly could go back in now, since this is actually using a mate to a planar face, I could edit that feature, edit that mate, and I could change that to a distance mate if I wanted to, which can also be very helpful sometimes. So that is the idea of working with really two different shortcuts. Really, there's a few different shortcuts that I showed you there, but the ability to use the R key to drag and drop your components in from your recently accessed documents into your assembly, and then combining that with the ability to create what's called a mate reference to kind of pre-cook some mates into your components so that when you drag and drop them into an assembly, they just snap right into place and it saves you that extra step of having to mate that component. And also, it sometimes saves you that extra step of having to reorient that component. Like when it comes to the sticker, the way that I drew the sticker when I drag and drop, when I drag and drop it into the assembly, it's not really the correct orientation. So I have to do some rotation. I have to move it into place. Maybe this face is on kind of a funky angle. Well, when you've got a mate reference, you can drag and drop and kind of also, also take care of that challenge where that component will just drag and drop and land exactly in the right spot. So I hope you guys found this tip helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you learned from this video. Of course, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next episode of Power Moves with Too Tall Toby.